Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have x times e to the power 1 over x equals e, e being the Euler's number, you know, 2.7 something. And we're going to be solving for the x values. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from an ln perspective. Uh, and then I will kind of show you how we can solve it. We will use a little bit of calculus. And at the end, we're going to take a look at the graph of this function. So let's start by aligning both sides. A lot of times when we have an exponential equation, especially the, if the variable is in the exponent or if the exponent is a variable, I should rather say, then aligning both sides is beneficial. Or if there's an E as a base, definitely you should align both sides. So I'm going to align a product here, x times e to the power of 1 over x. And on the right hand side, I'm just going to align E. Let me write it ln E first. And then obviously this is equal to 1. So now here I'm going to use the product property of logs, which says if you have the log of a product, then you can write it as a sum of two or more logs. So this can be written as ln x plus ln e to the power 1 over x. And that is equal to 1. And then one more time using the power property uh, here, we can just go ahead and move this to the front. And using the fact that ln e equals 1, we can just write this as ln x plus 1 over x equals 1. I know you already guessed the answer, and your guess is probably right, but uh, I'm going to put it in a nicer form. So at this point, you could also make a guess to find the x values. I'd like to separate the uh, 1 over x and 1 and ln x. So I kind of want to put it in two different forms. Uh, actually, let's do the following. How about making a common denominator? We get x ln x plus 1 divided by x equals 1. And then I can just multiply both sides by, let's make the fraction bar longer so people don't complain about it. But anyways, x ln x plus 1 is equal to x. So my goal is to kind of bring the, you know, ln x on one side and everything else pretty much on the other side. So we can write this as x ln x equals x minus 1. And then, and then we can just divide both sides by x, and it's going to look like this. ln x equals x minus 1 over x. In this case, we have to be careful about a couple things. For example, x should not equal 0, definitely. And also, we know that ln x is not defined for reals if x is less than or equal to 0. So we also have that x is greater than 0, which actually guarantees that x does not equal 0. So that is um, a good condition to have. But uh, x not being equal to 0 is a good thing because uh, we have a denominator. Anyways, x is positive. We know that. How could I find the solution? So one of the things, one of the ways you can look at it is obviously graph these two functions. One of them is ln x, which is the logarithm, you know, the logarithm. The other one is a rational function. It has a, uh, you know, uh, x-intercept at 1. And did I say x-intercept? Yes. These two functions actually have the same x-intercept. Why? Because if x is equal to 1, then they're both zeros, which means x equals 1, x equals 1 is a possible solution. So if x equals 1, then it works. Great. So uh, the million dollar question is, is that the only solution, right? So let's go ahead and look at this from a functional perspective. Let's consider f of x equals x e to the power 1 over x. I'm going to go ahead and differentiate this function with respect to x. This is a product, so I'm going to use the product rule, the derivative of x, which is 1, times the second function, plus the derivative of e to the power 1 over x. To differentiate e to the power u, you use the chain rule, which is e to the power u multiply by the derivative of what we call the inside, the derivative of the inside, which is u prime. So it's going to be e to the power 1 over x, times the derivative of 1 over x, which you should also know if you if you dealt with calculus, you should know that the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. But if you didn't know that, you could always write 1 over x as x to the power negative 1, and then use the power rule for differentiation. All right, great. So let's go ahead and set the derivative equal to 0, and see if we can simplify this a little bit. So how do I simplify it? And one thing we forgot, we forgot to multiply by the first function because remember this was a product, so this should also be multiplied by the first function, which is x. So it's the derivative of uh, u times v uh, plus the derivative of v times u. That's the formula. Okay, so now if you simplify this, x obviously is positive, it's not zero, so we can do this, cross out the x's, 
And then we get the following f prime of x is equal to e to the power 1 over x minus e to the power 1 over x divided by x. This is kind of nice because we can kind of make a common denominator and take out e to the power 1 over x and then we should be getting x minus 1 over x equals 0. So this is interesting because when we set the derivative equal to 0, e to the power 1 over x obviously cannot equal 0 because e is a positive number, it's a positive base, so the result can never be 0 unless uh, 1 over x approaches negative infinity, which x needs to be approaching 0 from the left. But that's another story. Anyways, so we want x minus 1 over x to be 0 in order for the derivative to be 0. And from here we get x equals 1. But that's kind of interesting because that is the critical point, but at the same time it is the solution. So how is that possible, right? So here's the idea. We're going to make a table. I know some folks don't like the idea of table, but I really like the table, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, tables are cool because it kind of shows you a graphical sort of like un quote unquote representation of the situation which is kind of nice. You can also use the second derivative but come on who wants to di differentiate this one more time right it's kind of painful. Anyways this is f prime and this is f and uh, only critical point that I have is one that is for the derivative also for f I can just put a you know, uh, mark here as well. I don't know why that, why that came up. First time it's coming up, by the way. Anyways, so I could put it there too, but that's not very important because what I care about is the derivative first. So here we go. Now, we want to know whether the derivative is going to be positive to the right of 1 or negative to the right of 1 because it's going to change sign. How can I tell? Well, just think about the derivative. It's f prime is... Uh, e to the power of 1 over x, which is always positive, times x minus 1 over x. So if x is greater than 1, obviously it's going to be positive. So you're going to be like a positive quantity. And you can always test it like with something like 2, right? You can t use a test value. If x is 2, you're going to get a positive uh, quotient. e to the power of 1 over x is always positive. Therefore, our function, the derivative of our function is positive if x is greater than 1. Otherwise, it's negative. This is significant because... If the first derivative is negative on an interval, it means the function is decreasing. Otherwise, it is increasing. This tells us that f has f has a minimum because we get that's what we get minimum at x equals one. But let's go ahead and evaluate f of one. If you replace x with one in the function, the original one, remember that was x. Um, times e to the power of 1 over x, that was f of x. If you replace x with 1, you're going to get e. So f has a minimum at x equals 1, the minimum value is e. Therefore, 1 comma e is a minimum. In other words, the horizontal line, the horizontal line, horizontal, how do you spell horizontal? y equals e is tangent to f of x equals x e to the power of 1 over x at x equals 1. What is that supposed to mean? Let's take a look at the graph and we'll see what that means. Okay, here we go. Here I graphed y equals x times e to the power of 1 over x and y equals e, which is the horizontal line, the orange one. And the blue one is the exponential thing. N notice that they are tangent at 1 comma e. This is e, by the way, and this is 1. So that means the horizontal line intersects the curve only at one point. The other one cannot be intersected. Therefore, there's only one solution, and that is x equals 1. Now, what would happen if this function equals another y value like 1 over e or anything less than e and greater than 0? Then you would have no solution because the horizontal line wouldn't intersect. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.